Hey everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look at the latest case to come from the Fractal Stables and that is the Define 7. We've lost the R now, we've been used to the R, 3, 4, 5 and 6. They've dropped it for the 7 and it's now just called, quite literally, the 7. I do have the XL for you to take a look at as well so that you can see some of the size differences and where the extra girth and sizing has been used for the cases. But there's quite a lot for us to get through on this, even the normal one, there's quite a lot for us to get through. So get yourself comfortable, go and get your tea and biscuits, and I'll break it down in the usual TTL fashion. As always, for the regulars, we start at the top and at the front. Now, you have your headphone, your microphone, you have a reset switch, you have a Type-C USB on the front, so it's USB 3.1 Gen 2. Lovely to have that included. Your power switch, you have a couple of USB 2s and a couple of USB 3s just there. This is your power um, light, or you could wire it up as a hard drive activity light if you wanted. And while we are looking at the top, you can see that we've got this lovely perforated top. Now it does come with a plain top, but it also comes with this, and they are very easy to remove in that you can literally just pull the top off. Super easy. Lovely little push tabs in uh, four spots, so you can see where they latch here and here. Really, really easy for you to be able to pull it off. Now. The other things that you get when you uh, pull it off is you've got um, some meshing on the top as well for if you wanted to run a dust filter. If you're running it as an exhaust, as we are here in this configuration, you don't particularly need to run the meshing if you don't want to. Now, what you can do is you can see that there are offset mounts. Now, it's actually a couple of offset mounts because you can run it in two different positions if you're running a 120 millimeter fan setup. Uh, AIO radiator or even just fans but the outer ones can be used as 140s as well so you've got 140 options you've got a couple of 120 options it's actually really nice round here as well you can see this circle would be ideal for a fill port so you could run that on there if you want and if you've got fans on the outside you could actually run use this as a possible pass through for fan cables and the like but that would mean running fans externally. It doesn't really kind of uh, align itself for that, but you know, the options are there. So rather than just telling you you can't, they've kind of said that you can. Uh, the, to put the meshing back on, really nice and simple, super easy click clunk. Also to put the fan panel, um, the roof panel back on, this is just as easy to swap to the main panel as well. You can see I've kind of dropped it into place. Little push home, same at the front little push home everything on this case is so well designed and all the, the the manufacturing tolerances and everything like that everything just fits and clicks in so well really loving the background lighting uh with this new kind of setup i hope i can kind of mimic this when we go to the other place anyway front door opens up with a lovely complicated hinge so the hinge actually when you look at it, it, when you close the door, it takes the door back in close again. And then as it comes open, it pushes the door away from the body of the case. I really like that. It's a small thing, but it works really well. Something that you can see here is this additional dust filter up here. Now on the cases of old, you would have just had an optical bay cover here. But what they've done is because they know we want to put fans in the front and not all of us want to use optical base, they've actually brought out this lovely bit of meshing. Now, I do have to uh, draw attention to my server case, which I made some years ago, where I pretty much made one of these parts myself. So they've not said in so many words that it was my idea, but I'm going to say that it, it may have been inspired by my server case and I love and I just love the fact that companies and manufacturers are actually listening to what end users end up doing with their cases. So you can see we've got bitumen on the front panel, it's scattered around in other places as well, it's behind the back panel, it's behind the plain roof panel as well should you need it. 
the um, front panel comes off just as well. Lovely meshing. I've actually always been quite a fan of the Fractal meshing, which is why I've used them on all of my home server builds. Uh, and you, it's not 100%, it's not foolproof. You do still have to keep it clean. You do still have to keep your room relatively clean as well. But if you know what a Hoover is, you shouldn't have too many issues. It does give us numerous fan options, as you can see there in the front. It comes with a pair of 140 millimeters fitted. You can run 340 millimeters in the front and in the roof as well, should you wish. And there are many options to be able to combine uh, then you can run uh, multiple 120mm uh, fans, radiators, AIOs as well. So up to three 140s in the front, up to three 140s in the roof. Uh, you can also run up to three 120s in the front and the roof as well. And in the roof, as I've already shown you, there are the options for offsetting to be able to run uh, deeper radiators. A little bit of a push home when I get it situated properly in the front, it helps. A little bit of user error, but there you can see that the front panel's all in and nice. What you can also see as I zoom this in, is there is, a, is actually quite a bit of room down the side for um, breathing. So you can see your options there. It's all super zoomed in, but it will give you a good idea on what's going on. The front panel can be twisted, uh, twisted, can be moved so that the door can open either way. There is also another dust filter in the bottom which goes the full length of the case, so there's plenty for you there to keep you busy. The other thing is, is while we're zoomed in, I'm gonna show you this door just so you can see what I mean about it um, opening. I'm really liking the light. Uh, so when I open the door, you'll see it lifts it away from the front panel because of that funky hinge and I really like that it's a lovely lovely touch and it just gives it another air of quality I'm going to do it now with you zoomed in that much more as you'll see it's just starting to lift it away now it's so nice this is almost kind of like geek engineering porn uh, and it just goes to show the uh, quality of the uh, build and design on this case. So round to the rear of the case, something to pick up on on the top is this here. These are little pull tabs for the doors and the doors both come off in a really, really nice and simple way where you can literally just use this to pull the doors off. You can see there's a little tab there, but the doors are on same push pins as the roof and if you have a look down the side you can see that there are the locating tabs up there and I will do the super technical one Bob zoom in so that you can see that's literally how the doors pop in and then there are locating tabs at the bottom so that when we go to put the door itself on there are tabs on the bottom of the doors pop that on up to the top push closed Really nice and simple. And the uh, glass panel door on the other side is exactly the same. You can see how easy I just got that off. It's beautiful. And it, everything fits. There's no big panel gaps. There's no big air or dust gaps going on in there. It all feels really nice. Something else that I like is I showed you the door, the door, the roof panel had that design on the top of it. And it's reflecting really nice with the nano leafs on the uh, ceiling but they carried it on into the uh, rear mesh design as well but then also down into the io covers as well and i think that's also a really nice touch the io covers fit so well together you'd think that they were the bracing tabs that came across come across but they don't i mean look at the tolerances on those tabs and they all fit um, over each other with each other so well that you don't get any worries about big gaps or anything like that and again that's just to show the attention to detail with the design on this case you have got 
a, a vertical mount on the right hand side of the normal AO if you wanted to put a GPU in there. Now if you've just got a dual slot GPU you'll be able to run it next door to the window absolutely fine. You won't have to worry. If you've got something like a Strix which is a 2.5 slot then you will still be able to get it in there but the actual airflow for the GPU down the side where it's going to be so close to the window is going to be one that you're going to want to keep an eye on. If you don't get good enough airflow for your build, then there are plenty of options out there where you can replace the entire section here. Uh, a couple of uh, Fractal competitors make um, uh, vertical mounts that go in here. You can fit one of those absolutely fine. It will sit your <coughs> precious GPU much further away from the window and you won't run into any thermal issues. We will cover thermals in a moment because I've done some proper testing uh, with our normal static test equipment, just so that you can have a look. Uh, then you can also see down the bottom the power supply uh, mount. You can put your power supplies both ways around because you can undo these screws and flip it around if you want. It's nice and simple. Also makes things easy for you because you can pull the entire power supply straight out the back and you haven't got to worry about anything else. Back round to the rear of the case, one of the party tricks for this case is this rear panel down here. And it's kind of a way to hide your lower cables in the case. Now, if you were to want to do that, it would actually be really nice if they did a rear panel window. Now, I've not heard anything yet, but I'm hoping that Josh is going to pop up in my Skype or my Twitter or on my phone because he pesters me at all times of the night that uh, they might have a glass rear panel and I think it needs one because with this beautiful addition down the bottom it actually does a really good job of hiding everything. Now I've not paid any particular effort into trying to keep the rear of the case tidy um, but anyway you, uh, you can see that it's done a relatively good job with the, uh, with the cables that we do have in there. So with the cables that we do have in there, you can see the cover on the bottom. I've showed you the lovely B-roll. I'm also going to show you a couple of pictures of this rear panel here, where you can move it across to give yourself more hard drive base. Now, you can get a 3.5 inch hard drive mounted on here, should you want it. And there is, uh, in the lower section, as you've already seen, another two 3.5 inch hard drive mounts. But you can get 11 uh, hard drives, 3.5 inch hard drives, in this case if you wanted to, uh, but you would need to buy the extra mounts. So you can push the panel over, go buy some additional mounts, you could turn it into a massive server case as I'm going to if you wanted to. So there are lots of options there for those of you out there that might be doing like um, graphic design or something like that and need lots and lots of storage or maybe you're going to use it as a really quiet home storage server like I'm going to. Um, there are going to be a lot of options for you there. Also, this mount here is the same as a 120mm fan mount. So if you wanted to, you can use any unused 120mm fan mount to put that mount anywhere. You can put a hard drive on it, 3.5 inch hard drive. You can put a solid state drive on it. You could even use it to mount a, um, <coughs> excuse me, mount a reservoir on there or a water cooling pump on it if you wanted as well. I don't particularly see that as being aesthetically pleasing in the main body of the case, but if you wanted to do it somewhere else, like maybe in the bottom of the case or something like that, I certainly think that it wouldn't be a bad idea. Also around the back of the case, you can see that we've got a couple of 2.5 inch hard drive mounts. You can see, and you will have seen them a little bit more up close with the B-roll for the lower panel, but there are some lovely cable routing um, tie downs that go up the main sections of the case. And then you get to the top and you've also got the fan controller in the roof where it's got um, uh, fan control there for three PWM fans and then six three pin fans. The case fans that come with it are three pin as well. You can see the white cables kind of flicking out from it. So it's good that it's got the mix there. And uh, the three three pin fans that we have here, we've actually got coming off of the 360 millimeter Fractal AIO that's on the other side. So it all kind of ticks in and ticks boxes all really nicely. Um, and I think that's about it for the back of the case. I thought it did, but it didn't. So 
other things that I do need to talk to you about are grommets. So you've got two grommets that go up the side of the case. Now these are in a decent position so you can actually have an EATX board in this without any worries. There are also two grommets on the top of the case, so when you push your cables through from your AIO, they're not just open sections, they've got a couple of grommets there as well. A lot of manufacturers seem to miss this, and it, they haven't with this, and it's all really nice. Then there are a lot of tie-downs around the outside of the case as well. Now, you, your tie-downs are going to be these plastic ones down the middle, but you do have them down the side, and there are some more down the bottom of the case. And then also, if you look over here, there are tie downs around the outside of this front panel so that you could zip tie things down a little bit further if you wanted to as well. So there are a lot of uh, cable management options and then also in the bottom again just to draw attention to that uh, secondary panel means you can actually pretty much hide your hard drives if you've got them in the bottom or your cables and all of that sort of stuff as well. Flipping the case over removing that large dust filter that I did talk to you about before. What you can see here is I did say to you about unused fan mounts uh, and this is another way that you could do it. But this is also another way that you can put water cooling in the case. So you can see here that you could easily get a couple of 140 millimeter fans or a 280 millimeter radiator in the bottom depending on the size of your power supply. Uh, you can see that screwed in here is your fan uh, sorry, your hard drive mount. So that, that hard drive mount holds two 3.5 inch hard drives or solid state drives, whatever you wanted to do. Now you can buy this <coughs> hard drive cage independently if you wanted, and you could put another one in the bottom. <coughs> so you've got options there. But the main reason for me taking that uh, mount off is there are options in the bottom for you to ditch the hard drive cage and you could end up if you wanted to fitting an extra radiator in the front in the bottom so you could have one in the bottom one in the front one in the roof you'd probably have to go skinnies and you'd have to go careful on your alignment it's definitely going to need to not have a massive power supply in the bottom but it does open up a lot of options and possibilities for you there and possibilities are king because then that means we can adapt we can uh, make our own choices and make the system our own and I think the addition of this in the bottom again just goes to show the attention to detail with this case. Round to the uh, business side of the case, I'm going to take that window off just like I said you could before. You can see that they've got the white bit on the bottom but that's because there is metal on the other side of the glass uh, and where the mounts are. But lovely window, isn't tinted, like the fact that we can see the hardware through it nice and easily. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing a dark white version, as in a dark window, but I know that the windows are going to be available separately and they are doing the, the, the black version of the case, so I'm sure there'll be ways, if you wanted a darker window, you could do. Obviously this is going to mean that you could, you'd have to buy it, but anyway, something that I did want to cover is we can pull the roof off at any time anyway, but something else that we can do in the roof is there are a couple of screws on the front here. Now I'm not going to do it on camera, but we've done it and I've got some um, pictures of it, is you can remove that entire top panel. That completely leaves the rest of the case open. And uh, one of the things I would say is I would love it if Fractal brought out a glass top or an acrylic top. I don't know, I haven't got a clue. Fractal, make it happen. Otherwise, someone's going to end up um, it's probably going to be Hassan or someone that's going to end up laser cutting this top out and then putting a acrylic section in the top of it. In fact, we could probably get away with tempered glass with that. Uh, and then you can have a fully windowed roof panel because it doesn't need this to latch into. The only issue is going to be where the door panel goes and I'm sure one of us would be able to sort that out. But anyway, I'd love to see a glass roof on it. I know we're getting very vector with it then, I understand that. But it's the modder in the, me that's making me get all excited about possible options and possible build changes, making it unique, all of that sort of stuff. But anyway, I'm going to leave that with you all to kind of dream about because I already have done. So, I did say to you that the, that panel there across the back of the case can be moved. Uh, and it can be moved, you can bring it right the way over so that you pull these two sections out. And there are two sections there, I do need to bring specific um, uh, attention to that. It does mean that you can fit an AIO in the front of the case if you want. 
and you just remove that single section there. If you want to run a massive radiator, then you can pull both of them off and you have a large open section. But if you do pull those out, then that does mean that you can move that panel this way so that you end up with a panel over here. Uh, and if you do that, then that means you can use all those hard drive bays. The only thing that you have to do at that point is if you run an AIO like I am in the roof, you have to, you can't use the very outside edge of the um, offset. So if you're running uh, the um, hard drive cage moved over like I've just explained, you wouldn't be able to use this very, very outside edge offset with a 360 millimeter radiator. I'm not sure why you'd wanna be running all those hard drives and a 360 millimeter radiator, but if you did, you'd have to kind of consider that. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to, you'd have to come down to a 240 millimeter radiator and then you have zero issues with how many hard drives you have in the front. Or you just give yourself, um, uh, I put an extra couple of hard drives in the very, very bottom instead, and then you can still run it. So there are so many possible options with this case, it's actually kind of getting difficult to try and explain them all. Hopefully this will kind of try and explain it but it's just because the radiator is now right on the very outside of the case that if you move that panel over, it's gonna get in the way a little bit. So no 360 if you want a hard drive right in the top <coughs> uh, and the outside edge. So just keep that in mind, peeps. Hopefully it makes sense. It does to me, but yeah, we'll see. So back to the business side of the case, and this is your hard uh, drive, hard. it's your power supply, Tom, come on. It's your power supply cover. You can see that the uh, design from the roof and the back panels uh, and even in the floor has actually been continued on here. And you've also got some mounts there for solid state drive mounts should you want to use them. <clears throat> and there's also a grommet over here for um, your IO to pass through and all of that sort of stuff, USB 2. The only thing that there wasn't a grommet on was over in this corner where I'm assuming your um, our front panel audio is going to come through and consider i i think this definitely needed a cover there even if it was a little plastic cover that sat over the top or a grommet or something it needed one there for me they've put grommets everywhere else i don't understand why there isn't one there one of the selling points for this case was the fact that it can house an eatx motherboard now with an eatx motherboard this is a normal atx motherboard all it means is there's a little extra girth on the outside of the board. So it would come out this way a little bit. And it pretty much means that the an EATX board would just about touch those grommets, but it wouldn't completely cover them. It's more than enough for you to be able to pass cables and everything through, but there's nothing in the way of you being able to uh, do it and fit it. It's actually all really nice. And the open air aspect of this case, I personally really like as well. It means you can put an astronomical graphics card in. There isn't a graphics card that uh, wouldn't go down here. It does also mean that if this is a normal, this is a Strix, so you can get a Strix in really easily. You could also have an 80 mil radiator in the front with push pull and still have clearance from the Strix. So there's ample room for you to be able to get radiators in there, massive graphics cards. <coughs> it works really nicely. Now, the only time that it's gonna get confusing is if you want to put radiators everywhere because obviously if you have a radiator in the roof there's not quite going to be the uh, room for you to then be able to get uh, another radiator in the front um, so if you go 360 in the roof I'd say you want to be thinking about 240 uh, or a 280 in the front um, and to be honest with you if it was really me I would probably go a bigger radiator in the front and then sacrifice the roof you do go big radiator in the front though, let's say you go 360, it's going to hamper things with the roof. You will be able to put a 240 in nice and easily, but down in the floor, if you have a massive front radiator, it's actually going to make it pretty much a 120 or a 140 only. And at that point, I don't particularly like those rads. So uh, ideal option is going to be a big 360 in the front you can easily then get a 240 in the roof and because of the offset side of things you can put a 30 45 or even a 60 in there if you wanted obviously then that's going to mean it's going to drop down into your view so i'd probably stick with a 30 or something like that but it does mean that you can get an awful lot of water cooling in this case and still keep things looking tidy as well 
the 140 millimeter fan in the back only goes up to a thousand rpm but it is all white and it's the same as the fans in the front if you have a look so you get all white fans with the case which is a nice touch uh, you do get black versions with the black cases, but I just thought it would be uh, well worth uh, mentioning. The only other thing that we've not really drawn enough attention to, and that's my fault from the way I rushed the beginning, is the fact that the front panel is, has an aluminium overlay and it's brushed as well. But one of the things I really liked on the front is, and this is a first, is they've now put the new Fractal F logo embossed in the bottom left hand corner and it's a really really nice touch again just goes to show an attention to detail and I think that's been getting missed with a lot of brands lately so I think that little addition is really nice captures the light quite well as well Now this is the XL version of the case. All of the same things apply with the removable top panel that you can move around, the offset top panel, what's going on in the bottom, what's going on in the front, the fact that we had the um, removable mount at the top, it's slightly bigger on the front, so you can see you've got the extra panel there, it's just slightly bigger. And that's pretty much what the case does overall, is it is, a bigger version and that really makes the most amount of difference not necessarily where the hard drive bays would be in the front but the gap between the uh, motherboard and the grommets what this does mean is you can run server boards in this if you wanted to so you'd be able to get your dual cpu boards in there you can see all the extra screw mounts to the right hand side for all the other board mounts so there's lots lots more room there there's also a lot more room at the bottom of the boards and more grommets as well. So the old school boards that used to be much deeper and needed another set of screws, it will swallow that completely as well. So much more room, but also if you've got a normal ATX board or any ATX board, and let's say you've got a couple of graphics cards in, it's going to mean there's more room at the uh, bottom for your graphics card um, before the power supply cover. So that's a really nice touch there as well. It's definitely going to give you more options. But the ACE card for this, I personally believe, and it's the reason why I've done it straight after talking about water cooling with the normal 7, is at the top of the board. So you can see there's acres more room at the top. It's significantly larger. You can probably get a 60mm radiator with a set of fans above the motherboard completely there. And what that also does mean is if you wanted to put a 360mm rad in the roof, that's 60mm thick, you're then still going to be able to get a 360mm radiator in the front. And they're not going to clash. So if you wanted the fractal kind of design aspect, but you want massive water cooling ability, the XL is probably going to be the one that you're going to want to go for. Now, I th always used to think of the XLs as being the server kind of case. Um, and in reality, I would say this is the balls to the wall water cooling options. Water cooling option. It's got all of the best bits of the normal seven, but it just gives you that extra room to be able to completely fill it up with huge radiators and not run into any issues and it's certainly going to give you a lot less questions and kind of like things to oh I wonder if it'll fit I wonder if it'll fit um, uh, and uh, that is really where I see this case fitting in all of the other things it has the same doors the same roof panel that you can remove the same fact that you can pull it off the same cover down the bottom um, it comes with an extra amount for the uh, um, uh, the multiple mounts for the fans that they're screaming about I don't particularly like. I do like the fact that the grommets here, these are metal and they're actually completely closed up rather than being rubber and you can pull them out if you need them and then move the rubber grommets across. It's basically just, well it's pretty much what it says on the tin. It's the Define 7 XL and it is the extra large version and I'm looking forward to seeing if I can get one of these off of them in white because the amount of water cooling you can fit in this thing is insane. Ha <laughs> okay so on to testing and in case you're wondering the uh, black case over there is the XL 
and it's just sat by this side. Now you can go to the Overclock 3D website and see the graphs that I'm just about to show you for the thermal testing. The one thing that I will say though is uh, our 600 RPM testing, if you think about us forcing fans to say at 600 RPM and then stressing the CPU and the GPU to a hundred percent, it's a completely unrealistic test. But we do it just to stress the cases and see which ones work and which ones don't. Uh, we then do a thousand RPM test and then what we would normally do is a maximum RPM test. But with the defines, the maximum RPM is a thousand RPM. So that's going to be their silent nature side of things, but it does is going to limit on the thermals a little bit. But you do need to think about if it's going to be mixing in around the pack, if you are going to be adding an AIO into the roof, because in our normal testing that we've done, we just use a normal um, normal tower heat sink as you normally would do at home. We didn't add any extra fans in. But if you were to smash an AIO into the roof and test it that way, you're going to then get extra airflow and think it's going to work better. Uh, so, the results, it came out with the CPU specific stuff, it was around the top, uh, and by the top of the pack, it was one of the warm air ones. certainly wasn't the hottest. But then when you moved on to the GPU, the GPU side of things, because of this extra room in the front, there was plenty of room for the GPU to breathe, it did really well. I'm quite surprised by this because the um, Vector didn't do that well with its thermals and we kind of thought that was down to the fact that there was restriction at the front. So whatever they've done with this and the combination of the fans, it's made a dramatic difference and it's actually worked out really well. And as I've said to you before, you can see that we sort the graphs in both CPU and GPU so you can see how things stack out. But it, this the layout definitely favours the GPU that little bit more. So we'll try again. So you can, I've obviously sorted the CPU and the GPU separately so that you can see that it affects the uh, graphs that little bit differently, but it, the, the way that this case is laid out, it definitely likes the GPU thermals that little bit more for whatever reason. Um, the fans on them are incredibly quiet. So even at max 1000 RPM, it doesn't really make any noise. So, but if, the, if the, it's not gonna give you enough cooling performance for you know, just airflow, then it might be the not the right case for you anyway, because the way that these are designed are to be that little bit quieter because of the bitumen, the fact that you're not getting direct airflow with the front. I don't know, maybe we'll get a Meshify version later on or something, but I very much doubt it um, because it's not that type of thing. It is a silent case or a much lower noise case, and it does it impeccably with a lot of options. And like I said, you could even have a quieter case with the XL and have all of that water cooling in it as well. The thing that has struck me with this case more than anything, though, is the attention to detail. The fact that they have thought of so much. The fact that you can take that bar out and have the completely open case so that you can get in there and get in with the thick of it. The fact that everything is on those pop clips. It's the nicest door mechanism I have ever used. It's so simple and effective and the tempered glass hasn't got big ugly things on it or screws and big panel gaps. It is, if you like engineering, then this is one of the best engineered cases I've ever had the pleasure of getting my hands on. It's that good. I'm actually going to be using the Define 7 for my next server case. Now that might not surprise a lot of you because the last, I've only ever had two home servers and one was in an R3 and one was in an R5. So it's not a massive surprise, but this one is just that next level better. And I also love the fact that they robbed my idea and put the mesh up here as well, because I did that in the last server that I built and the fact that it's ended up in this kind of makes me smile quite a bit. It's in the expensive side of cases. If it wasn't built by Fractal and it didn't have all those design um, elements and was so well put together, another manufacturer might be able to rip it off and not make it as nicely for about 120 quid. But to be fair, you'd be missing the, all of those little options that make this amazing. And I genuinely think for 170 quid with all of those extra touches, options, that everything fits so well, so nicely, I think if anyone did try and rip it off, it just wouldn't be the same. Um, so I know I'm waffling with that, but it is one of those things where it's just 
wonderful. And it's probably one of the nicest cases I've had in a long time. And for us to get this at the beginning of 2020, it's pretty much throwing the gauntlet down for all the other manufacturers now to see what they're gonna to bring to the table. But consider I know it normally takes a case manufacturer a year or two to go from design to getting stuff out. I think there might be a few worried people out there. And this, my friends, I genuinely, genuinely love. And that is why I'm going to give it the TTL award because it's just a case for me, if I'm completely honest. Um, so it's kind of on par with our ultimate. So for 170 quid for what it delivers, but it's more for me, like I said, about that attention to detail and all the little things and like the nice offset hinge and the fact everything fits together and the doors, I just love it. I'm sad, no, I'm not sad to say it, I'm glad to say it, but they've completely won me over with this. I, I got a bit worried when the 6 come out because the, the, the R6 wasn't that much different to the R5 and it felt like they just changed the number a little bit. With this, they've kind of taken that ethos and just moved it on that little bit further and just made all those tiny details. And in reality, it's all the little details that have built up to make it such an epic case. I love it. And I'd like to argue with anyone that doesn't. Anyway, for now at least, in a rather messy filming area, but you won't be getting, you won't be seeing this for much longer. If you don't know why, you need to go and check the other videos. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one.